I'm not trying to establish uh, Christianity as the national religion or something. That's not what this is about at all. If you truly believe in the Bible's commands and you, you seek to follow those, it is impossible to be a hateful person. Because the greatest command in the Bible is that you love God with everything you have and you love your neighbor as yourself. You just heard Republican Speaker Mike Johnson address concerns about him being a hateful bigot towards gay people, allegedly. Now, he didn't say he was talking about queer people there, but to bring up hate, I mean, that was clearly a reference to all of the articles that have come out since he's become speaker about him not really being a big fan of members of the LGBTQ plus community. But according to him, we can be relieved to learn that he does not indeed hate gay people. And that is very reassuring to me as a member of the LGBTQ plus community myself, because I was beginning to worry, admittedly, a little bit, especially after learning about his advocacy for gay conversion therapy, for example, and his work with an organization doing gay conversion therapy and his wife's counseling services that compared homosexuality to bestiality and his longtime opposition to gay marriage and his national don't say gay bill and his advocacy for the criminalization of gay sex and his comparison of homosexuality to pedophilia or fears that homosexuality could literally destroy our entire democratic system. System, but thank goodness I have nothing to worry about as a gay man. You know, as somebody who was indoctrinated into fundamentalist Christianity myself at a very young age, I've experienced nothing but hate and vitriol from American evangelicals, but it is so nice to know that we have a speaker who is one of the good Christians, not one of the hate mongers, not one of the individuals who spread hate. Really happy about that. Now, I'm also very thankful that he cleared up the confusion around him possibly wanting a Christian theocracy, because as an atheist, that's also something that I was a little bit worried about, too, specifically after he suggested a religious litmus test for politicians. As Ra's story explains, in one 2019 video, Kelly Johnson, this is his wife, reportedly told seminar participants that biblical Christianity or a literal interpretation of the Bible, including the belief that the earth is just 6,000 years old, was the only valid worldview. You better sit down any candidate who says they're going to run for legislature and say, I want to know what your worldview is. I want to know what you think about the Christian heritage of this country. I want to know what you think about God's design for society. Have you even thought about that? If they hadn't thought about it, you need to move on and find somebody who has, Mike Johnson reportedly said in 2019. See, that right there gave me pause, but hearing him say that he definitely doesn't want to establish Christianity as the national religion makes me feel so much better. We can all breathe easier now knowing that um, it's not what it seems. It's, it's not a duck, even though it's quacking. Now, sarcasm aside, the new Speaker of the House obviously is an absolute fucking lunatic. And in that interview, he was re responding to critics concerned about his hateful past and present. But it was framed as an attack on his religion when in actuality... Um, there are reasons why critics have been as fierce as they have been, but regardless, here's some more from that interview. You know, I want to highlight, and, and this is truly outrageous, some of these things that have been said, but I'm just very curious about, to your point, a faith that is based on love, that is Jesus Christ, that was what he lived for, um, can be characterized in such a way, the Daily Beast called you a Christo-fascist. That is the first I've ever heard that term. Yeah, wow. They said you're the most extreme example of a dangerously empowered religious fanatic. But here is the line that really stood out to me. They go on to say that your desire to institutionalize your faith is the way of the Taliban and the mullahs in Iran. And then Bill Maher, who we know is not yes. a similar worldview as ours, he went so far as to bring up the main shooter. And he said, we don't know much about the guy yet, but apparently he heard voices. And I thought, is he different than Mike Johnson? I mean, degree, yes, but it's thinner than you'd think. How, what is it like to be compared to the Mullahs of Iran, the Taliban, and the main shooter? It's just disgusting. I mean, that is absurd. Of course, our religion is based on love and acceptance. So to compare that worldview with the Taliban who seek to destroy their enemies or with, you know, some deranged shooter who murders people is absolutely outrageous. And I think everyone who follows and believes in a Judeo-Christian worldview should be just terribly offended by that. I'm okay. I'll take the arrows. I understand it comes with leadership. And when you step into the fray, that's what you take. And, but but what, what really hurts me is that it, it really is a statement about everyone who believes yes. in this, that, that the country was built upon. Our Judeo-Christian foundation is the heritage of our country. 
No, it's not. And to be clear, I don't think anyone is saying that they have a problem with him being Christian. The problem arises when people like him try to use their power to institutionalize their religion, right? We have the separation of church and state to the chagrin of Christians who don't want to acknowledge that, but it is in the Constitution. Look it up. And um, they just pretend like that doesn't exist. And then they try to use their religion as a justification to pass certain policies, as a justification to be bigoted against LGBTQ plus people. And the problem is that's what he's doing. That's why people are criticizing him and calling him a Christo-fascist. The problem is him using his religion as a driving force behind policy decisions of major consequence. Case in point. As, as, a, as, a, as a Christian, I know and we believe that the Bible teaches very clearly that we're to stand with Israel, that God will bless the nation that blesses Israel, that we're to take the peace of Jerusalem, exactly. And therein lies the problem. He is basing policy, at least in part, on religiosity. And as someone raised in the church, I promise you, evangelical support for Israel is deeply problematic, to put it mildly. Jacobin explains the basis of the Israeli evangelical relationship, and so too evangelical support for using Israelis to dispossess Palestinians, is a belief that God gave Palestine to the Jews, and so Jews should be in Palestine. So far, so simple. But the yikes moment of the Israeli evangelical love is that the Jews being in Palestine is seen as a precondition for an Armageddon to rain down on earth, exterminating Jews and other non-converts to evangelism, while bringing the return of Christ in the apocalyptic second coming found in Revelation, the final book of the Bible. So understand that when an evangelical bases their support of Israel on religiosity, it is a means to an end, and they are implicitly acknowledging that all Jewish people and non-Christians will either be converted or killed in the Armageddon, which is something that they want to happen as soon as possible. But it's impossible for him to be hateful. He's a Christian. Yeah. So when he offers $14 billion in our tax dollars in aid to Israel for their genocide against Palestinians, it's not just because he's beholden to the Israeli lobby. It's not just because he doesn't care about the suffering of innocent Palestinians. It's because Israel is laying the groundwork for Jesus's return, according to him. Now, as more troubling revelations about him and his wife continue to emerge, they're both going out of their way to hide the most alarming aspects of their Christo-fascism. For example, his wife, Kelly Johnson, nuked her counseling website where she compared homosexuality to bestiality and incest. And on top of that, as LGBTQ Nation explains, Johnson also removed 69 episodes nice of his and his wife's podcast, Truth Be Told, with Mike and Kelly Johnson from his website. The pair dedicated June of 2023 to praising anti-transgender activist Matt Walsh, who blamed the Club Q mass shooting on men who cross-dress in front of children and said that he called for several boycotts of brands selling rainbow products this year in order to make the concept of pride toxic. The Johnsons also got mad at Disney for forcing a radical woke agenda and openly satanic programming on children. Now, just for clarification's sake, when an evangelical says satanic programming, there's a very good chance that they're saying LGBTQ plus affirming programming for children. So if there's like a rainbow flag in the background, or if a cartoon features a child with two moms or two dads, well, that is tantamount to satanism literally ask an evangelical they will tell you that so you know if he really believed that he hasn't said anything hateful the question is why delete so many episodes of their podcast what if we wanted to go back and listen to it i mean i for one have been a longtime fan of truth be told with mike and kelly so i'm disappointed to know that they removed so many podcasts but the question is why not stand by your conviction especially if it's not hateful I mean, it's a good question, is it not? Now, when it comes to his history of bigotry, which is undeniable, he's playing dumb. LGBTQ Nation continues, Before he was elected to Congress, Johnson was senior legal counsel for Alliance Defending Freedom, an SPLC-designated hate group. In his position at ADL, he filed briefs asking courts to allow states to criminalize homosexuality and argued against allowing same-sex couples to marry. Johnson has previously said that same-sex marriage will lead to chaos and sexual anarchy and place our entire democratic system in jeopardy by eroding its foundation. He claimed legalizing same-sex marriage would lead to pedophiles 
seeking legal protections for having sex with kids and people trying to marry their pets. He has also said homosexual relationships are inherently unnatural, ultimately harmful, and costly for everyone. He has sought to criminalize private gay sex between consenting adults, called gay marriage the harbinger of chaos, and said gay people should not be a protected class because they are capable of changing their abnormal lifestyles. Johnson recently said that such extreme statements were so banal to him that he doesn't even remember them. In other words, after a comprehensive history of anti-gay advocacy, he's pretending to not remember any of it. Okay, well, if you're having memory problems, do you remember last year when you voted against the codification of same-sex marriage or your don't say gay legislation? Any of that ring a bell? See, the reason why this all seems banal to him is because he genuinely is deluded enough to think that he's not hateful when he advocates against civil rights for LGBTQ plus people. This is the go-to tactic for evangelicals. In one breath, they'll argue against our civil rights, but in another breath, they'll qualify the previous statement with an ostensibly tolerant caveat. For example, in a 2004 column he wrote, he warns, quote, experts project that homosexual marriage is the dark harbinger of chaos and sexual anarchy that could doom even the strongest republic. But right after that, he adds, to be pro-traditional marriage and conscientiously opposed to all deviations from it is not to be anti-homosexual. How tolerant of him. As he wrote about how same-sex marriages would literally doom the Republic, he made sure to point out that he's definitely not anti-gay. It's amazing, isn't it? You see, you shouldn't have civil rights, and you are definitely going to spend eternity in agonizing pain, perpetually burning in the lake of fire and hell, but Jesus loves you. And because Jesus loves you, I love you because we don't hate anyone. We hate the sin, not the sinner. You know, there really is no hate like Christian love. And what he said in 2004, which is not that long ago, is really no different from the rhetoric that we heard from homophobes in the 1970s. Case in point. Anita, suppose one of your children came to you, or suppose you found out in some way that one of your children was a homosexual. What would you do? Well, first of all, I would love them and not disown them because they're my children and I would tell them that God loves them and that I love them very much and I would try to deal with that problem in the light that God does that he loves us as as uh, sinners but he hates our sin and that he cannot abide by sin he cannot tolerate sin in our lives so loving She'd maybe lovingly enroll her gay child in Counseling by Kelly Johnson to teach them that they're comparable to animal fuckers and try to get them to pray with a gay or something. I mean, after all of these years, they're still saying the same bullshit. Nothing has changed. And now all of the things that they said about gay people, they're copying and pasting that and saying it about trans people. But Mike Johnson can try to downplay or run away from his extremism, but we all know where he stands. He is a genuine danger to American democracy, not just because of his theocratic views, but because he is an insurrectionist supporting election denier who tried to overturn the 2020 election. And if American democracy fails, which is possible, unfortunately, it's not going to be because of gay people loving each other. It'll be because of Christo-fascist election denying lunatics like Mike Johnson. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Gay pride.